Last year, I reviewed the Nothing Phone 2 and found it to be really good. So I was looking forward to the Nothing Phone 3, but that phone never came. What came instead was this Nothing Phone 2A, which is sort of a light version of the Nothing Phone 2. As this thing launched for under 25,000 Indian rupees, which makes this an entry-level phone, I was curious to know whether this phone delivers a good overall experience, similar to the Nothing Phone 2, or does it make some serious compromise to reach this price point? So I used this phone for around 6 months and now I am here to share my experience with you guys. Now without any further ado, let's get started with the review. Starting with the design, this has to be the coolest looking phone in its price range. I in fact find it even better looking than the Nothing Phone 2. And with such cool colors on offer, Nothing has absolutely nailed it in terms of design. Even in terms of ergonomics, I am very happy with this phone. It's not too big or small, has flat sides for better grip, and the weight distribution is also done really well. Finally, coming to the build quality, this is where you can easily see and feel the compromise they have made. This phone has a plastic frame and a plastic back. It won't crack like glass, but it can be easily scratched. So using this phone with the case is highly recommended. I've been using it with a nothing transparent case all this time and it looks as good as new. Coming to protection, I am happy that at least the display is using Gorilla Glass 5 protection and the phone is IP54 rated for splash proofing. Next is display, here this phone does a good job. You get a 6.7 inch 120Hz AMOLED display with around a thousand nits of full screen brightness which is bright enough for outdoor use. You also get 2160Hz of PWM dimming as well as an extra dim mode for people who are sensitive to screen flickering. One small attention to detail worth appreciating is that you are getting symmetrical bezels in this phone which is very rare in its price range as that requires using a flexible AMOLED panel which is more expensive. In terms of HDR, the peak brightness is only 1300 nits so the HDR highlights don't pop as much as I would have liked but it's still a good experience. However, there is no HDR support in Netflix which is slightly disappointing. In terms of audio, you do get stereo speakers with this phone and they can get decently loud but they sound a bit flat. They lack the punch of good bass as well as the sparkle of good treble. Hear it for yourself. However, the microphone quality is pretty good and the great looking recorder app is an added bonus. Even the earpiece sounds good, I had no issues with handling calls even in noisy environments. I tested both wired and wireless audio with this phone and there is nothing to complain about. You get proper support for audio through the Type-C port and in terms of Bluetooth audio, you get support for all the codecs including both the lossless codecs LDAC and LHDC. Now coming to camera, Nothing claimed that the Phone 2A uses a camera setup which is very similar to the more expensive Nothing Phone 2 but they have changed a couple of things. The primary camera uses a Samsung sensor instead of Sony but with identical specs and the ultra wide camera uses the same sensor but lacks autofocus and macro capabilities. Still, I was expecting some good results and for the most part this phone delivers. The primary camera handles complex scenes with mixed lighting quite well and as this primary camera has a big enough sensor, you also get some natural shallow depth of field with close-up objects. And the ultra-wide camera also does a good job in most situations. It lacks the deeper contrast of the primary camera, but for its price range, this is a very good ultra-wide camera. Even in terms of color science consistency, there is little to complain about. It's not that both these cameras are flawless. There is a lot I can nitpick about like softer details, some overexposed highlights, with halo around light sources, chromatic aberrations, edge distortion, etc. But for a phone costing under 25,000 rupees, this is a fairly capable camera setup. The primary camera can also double as a 2x zoom camera, but I didn't find any extra detail in the 2x shots. And you can also take portrait shots in 1x and 2x magnification. These shots have good skin tones, but there is a bit of oversharpening applied to the 2x shots, 
and the edge detection also has some room for improvement. Speaking of portrait shots, even the selfie camera can do portrait shots and in most situations, I found the results to be pleasing. Next, coming to video recording, both the rear cameras can record videos in 4K 30fps and the quality is decent. It's a bit soft in terms of details and the dynamic range also could have been a bit better. But again, for the price, it's definitely not bad. Coming to selfie videos, this phone can record videos in up to 1080p 60fps which is a bit disappointing as this camera sensor can record videos in up to 4K which we have seen with the OnePlus 12. The camera app is well designed, smooth and responsive but it misses out on a few important features like portrait video, pro video and the ability to reorder the camera modes. Next is software which is the best part of this phone in my opinion. So this thing currently runs nothing worse on top of Android 14. This UI is very clean with absolutely no bloatware. Also, it's very well designed with many cool elements like these widgets for home screen and locked screen customization, unique app designs, and obviously the famous Glyph interface, which lets you use the rear lights for different tasks. It also gets regular updates with the most detailed change logs. And even now, it has been updated to the latest security patch and nothing has committed to provide 3 major Android updates and 4 years of security updates which is quite good for its price. But not everything is flawless about this UI. My biggest issue with Nothing OS is that there are very few system apps designed by Nothing. This UI depends too much on Google Apps for even basic tasks like viewing photos and videos or managing files. So I would definitely like to see more system apps made by Nothing, especially a gallery app and a file manager app and also a custom Google search widget to match the Nothing OS design as the default Google search widget looks completely out of place with the rest of this UI. Now let's talk about the performance. So this phone is powered by the Dimensity 7200 Pro which is a very efficient chip. It's not the most powerful chip in its price range but for most people it's more than adequate. These are the benchmark scores. The sustained performance scores are especially noteworthy as there is pretty much no reduction in performance even during longer usage sessions. This level of performance translates to very good day-to-day -day performance with good RAM management and very few lags and stutters. The only time I do notice some stutters is when apps are getting updated in the background or when I start using the phone after waking it up from deep sleep. One pro tip to get the smoothest experience is to enable force peak refresh rate from the developer options. This will consume more battery but the phone will feel extremely smooth. This phone would have felt even smoother if they had used UFS 3.1 type storage but the UFS 2.2 type storage used here isn't too bad. Coming to gaming performance, again while this isn't the best option for gaming in its price range, it's still fairly capable. BGMI runs at 60 FPS. COD at 90 FPS and more demanding games like Asphalt Legends Unite and Genshin Impact also run well though they can't maintain a constant 60 FPS. You can check out my dedicated gaming test video of this phone for more details. Next is battery. You get a 5000 mAh battery inside and the battery life is really good. I consistently get around 7 to 8 hours of screen on time even with heavy gaming which is great. And it also passed the PC Mark battery test and video streaming test with flying colors. But when it comes to charging, things are not as good. There is nothing wrong with the charging speed. You get about 45 watts of supported charging speed which can charge your phone from 0 to 100% in about 60 to 65 minutes. This is not the best but also not bad at all. What's bad however is that you don't get the charger in the box. Even though not including a charger with a flagship phone is a bad trend, those who can afford a flagship phone just need to spend an extra 2 or 3% to get a good fast charger. However, that same fast charger would be around 10 to 15% additional cost for a budget phone buyer, which is definitely not a small amount. So I feel that all budget phones should always include a charger in the box. In terms of biometric security, both the fingerprint scanner and face unlock systems are fast and reliable. 
The haptic motor used here is a linear one, which is good, but the feedback is soft, which may or may not be to everyone's taste, as some people prefer tighter haptics. In terms of sensors and connectivity, it's pretty much the standard affair, no surprising additions or missing stuff. Same goes with the network related features. You get support for several 5G bands and all the latest network features. And in my usage, I never encountered any network related issues or abnormal behavior. Alright, now it's conclusion time. So overall, the Nothing Phone 2A is a very good phone, but it's not for everyone. While it's not bad at anything, it's also not class leading in any particular department. It definitely has a cool unique design, but this design is let down by a cheap build which can be easily scratched. Similarly, Nothing OS is very polished with a very unique and cool design aesthetic, but it's let down by a lack of native system apps, and the fantastic battery life is let down by the lack of a charger in the box. But ignoring all these pros and cons, there is a certain level of freshness and appeal to this whole package which makes it quite enjoyable to use. It's definitely not meant for those who want the best value for money or want the best gaming or camera centric phones. But for someone who wants a cool looking phone, clean, bloatware free and ad free UI, long battery life and good enough performance and camera capability, this is a really good option to consider. Alright, that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Please like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel down below. Thanks for watching.